Hi everyone, so this video will be about me presenting and sharing with you guys my DNA ancestry results. I did this with 23andMe. It started a long time ago. It's something that I bought uh, back in, it was in around Christmas, and I sent it in early January, on the 7th, if I'm correct. And uh, one, around one month later, I received this email from, from them saying that they were not able to, to process the, the sample for whatever reason. So they asked me whether I wanted a refund or if I wanted to try it again. So I choose to, to do it again. They sent me another kit. But at that time, I was really, really busy with school and doing lots of things. So I just put it in a drawer and never really paid attention to it again until June 2017. I did again, grabbed the thing, spit in it, and mailed it back to 23andMe, the, to the labs. And um, just one month later, it's been pretty fast from what I can see, um, I just got the results today. So before we get started with the numbers, because it's all about a numbers game, a little bit of background about me, I'm of Portuguese ancestry. There is no other ancestry that I know of. Um, that is, I do not know a whole lot about my family history. All I know is back to my great grandparents. I was born in, and raised in France, and I've been living in the U.S. for for a little while now. Okay, all right, ready? Let's go. All right, I have the results open. All right, so the results. I am of ninety nine. 0.3% European ancestry. It's pretty obvious. Okay, so if we look at the breakdown, so 81.1% Southern European, of that 62.8% Iberian or Iberian Peninsula, which is Portugal in my case, 1.8% um, Italian, Sardinian 0.7%, and broadly Southern European, 15.8%. So it's actually pretty accurate, pretty, pretty, um, what I say, pretty what I expected because um, I think my family has been around in the same area in Portugal for a long, long, long time. And the DNA are consistent with that. So the next largest chunk of ancestry will be Northwestern European uh, with 14.6% and that includes British and Irish 3.3% French and German 2% it's funny how I lived um, many years in a place but had in the end very little ancestry in common with it but actually more than, than I thought Scandinavian 0.7% broadly Northwestern European, which means um, genetic markers that are found in that region of Europe but are not specific to any country, 8.6%. Ashkenazi Jewish, less than 0 0.1, which means that it's just pretty much nothing there, and broadly European, 3.6%. Then we have Middle Eastern, North Africa, with 0.3%. This is really, really small. I mean, um, probably nothing more than just statistic, a statistic presence. Probably not very reliable either. So we have North African with 0.1%. Broadly, Middle Eastern and North African, 0.2%. Pretty much both can overlap pretty much. Then we have Sub-Saharan African, West African, less than 0.1%. Again, um, just a statistic uh, result. And broadly Sub-Saharan African, 0.2%. Then we have East Asian and Native American. I didn't know it was Native American, but... And this confirms that I'm not. So less than 0.1%. So again, it's very much nothing else than a statistic guess, an educated guess. And an assign, 
0.1%, uh, which means that it was um, not specific to one region, really. So these are my results. <clears throat> now I'd like to elaborate a little bit on them. Um, that's pretty much what I expected. I didn't really need to run a fancy genetic test to know those things. I know that, yeah, I mean, I'm most likely very much a European person and uh, very much from, from Portugal because this is what, I, what I've what i always... This is a culture I grew up in and this is what I was expecting. So this is exactly what I was... what I was, um, what I was um, expecting. Um, so now my th my point is, would I do it all over again if I had the chance? And my answer would be no. Uh, this is a kit that costs like $99. It's not a whole lot of money, but if you think about it, um, I would probably rather do something else with it because this is, at least in my case, did not teach me anything new um, because all of that you already know. People usually know what they are, who they are, and um, this is not going to really teach you anything like very surprising. Unless you've been um, adopted, then it could kind of make sense for you, but other than that, you usually pretty much know where you're coming from. So um, yeah, that was not something that I would do again if I had the opportunity. And uh, also, you can see, you know, there's lots of videos around the internet, and uh, with people showing their results and one thing that is really striking to me is that a lot there's a lot of misconception about those tests and what they actually can tell you lots of people are having I believe wrong expectations with them because this is not going to tell you your personal family tree with the people who they who they were what they were doing when they were born well, what were their occupation and that kind of things. All it does is very much uh, taking your DNA, your genetic markers, biological markers, and compare it with with samples of population and see if it's, you know, if, say, a marker is more prevalent, more frequently found in a population, in a population located in, say, in Germany. That's all it does. And as we know, people have moved around, people have intermarried a lot, and uh, no population is 100% homogeneous. So again, it's more like a statistic guess. It's just guessing. Most likely you're this, most likely you're that, but it also comes down to the point that um, ethnicity and culture is not a purely biological concept. I know that in the United States, um, I know that this has been changing over over centuries, but um, there was really these theories saying that culture is 100% connected with with biology, which really now we know it's not. Um, you'll hear people with these videos saying that they're 20%. I don't know, say French. That oh, I'm 20% French, but I really do not think this is to be understood that way. Um, because your ethnicity is really very much the culture you're brought in with. It's not, it's not just a biological marker. It's m so much more than that. So, as a conclusion, I would say that this is just something that was fun, but again, it's not something to be, to be, that's going to determine who you really are. Because in the end we are all mixed but just all different mix okay so I hope you enjoy this video and uh, good luck to you